SharePoint Server Enterprise and InfoPath 2010 provide you the capability to customize SharePoint list forms. And that could be any list. It could be a custom list. It could be a built-in list. It could be even an external list. What I'm going to do here is to show you that how you can go to the tasks list, for example, and customize the task list form using InfoPath. Now, currently, if I clicked on add new item in the task list, this is the out of the box list form that I get. And this is just fine. But if you want to enhance it, if you want to customize it and make it so it's more dynamic in nature, what you would do is you can click on the list tab here, click on the customize form button. Uh, this button is going to be available if you have SharePoint Server Enterprise running and also you would need to have InfoPath on your machine for this button to really work. You could do it this way when you did, did click on when you do click on this button uh, it makes a connection to the InfoPath client opens it up and you're in business. Another way of executing this is by going to start all programs Microsoft Office and opening up Microsoft InfoPath Designer 2010 and then going to the SharePoint list form template functionality here, design form, and from here pointing to that list. So that's the two ways for you to get to this point, either starting from the actual list itself or starting from InfoPath and then putting in the URL, which I'm about to do right now for the site, my finance site, click on next. And then you would go ahead and click on customize an existing SharePoint list and pick the list that you want to customize the form for. Click on next. And it's going to make a connection to that list Call it main connection, which is fine for us. Finish. All right, so here's my default form, the way uh, that I have it right now, the baseline form. What I'm going to do is I'll go to the top right here, click on the insert tab and add a picture over here, picture for my company, which is in the documents folder, AdventureWorks. Simple enough. Now what I want to do is underneath the picture, I want to put in my title of the task. So instead of the title being a separate line here, I'm going to drag it and drop it right beneath my AdventureWorks logo. And now I'm going to modify the properties of this title box. So I'll click on it, go to Home tab here, make it bold. Whatever the text that's going to be in the, ti uh, in the uh, title here is going to be bold. And I'll make it a little bit bigger. So let's make it 14. And I'll change the font to, let's do it to Berlin Sans FB Demi. All right. I no longer need this line here, so I'm going to right click and say delete this row. And now for all these uh, labels here, take these labels, customize them by, let's say, making them bold, maybe changing the text font if I wanted to. And uh, also in table tools layout, I'm going to change the shading to so the background of this. All right, just to make it look a little prettier, basically. In addition, what I'm going to do is I'll go to the status field and I'm going to set up some conditional formatting for the status field. The status field currently, if I go to the properties tab here, shows me that I have some choices. When I click on the edit choices, the choices are not started, in progress, completed, deferred, and waiting on someone else. Depending on the choice that exists in this drop down, I want it to be, uh, I want the color to change. So I'm going to add a rule here. I'll click on add rule. And if it's equal to something, and that's something I have to define a little bit later, go ahead and set the color to this red color, is what I'm saying. And automatically it filled in the first option for me, the not started option, which is exactly what I want. So if the field is not started, then go ahead and set the background to red and font to uh, also different kind of red shading. Okay, here's my rule that it made for me. I'll make another rule now. Add rule is equal to, this time I'll do neutral, yellow. And here I'm going to put in 
if the status is in progress then go ahead and set it to neutral or yellow lastly set it to green or good if it's completed and okay at any point in time if you want to see exactly what your form looks like before publishing it you can click on the home tab click on the preview button that will show you what it looks like currently close the preview and what I'm going to do with this due date field here is that I'm going to make sure that it's never in the past. So in here, I'm going to also add a rule. And the rule here is going to say that if is in the past, this time show a validation error. So this is going to be a validation rule. Here we go. The validation error, it filled in for me automatically saying that enter today's date or a date in the future. So it cannot be in the past. So it did all the hard work for me. One last thing, I'm going to take the description field here and I'll make this a required field. By going to Control Tools Properties and clicking on Cannot Be Blank. All right, so I'm all done right now from what I wanted to do. Lastly, what you want to do to put it back or publish it back to the list is simply go to File and click on Quick Publish. Notice before I click on Quick Publish that it knows exactly where to go publish this form. Okay, here we go. Quick Publish. Okay, it's done. Click on OK. Now I'm going to go to my list, my task list in the Finance site, and I'll click on Add New Item Now. Here's my form. Okay, let me go ahead and uh, Add a new title here. And that's going to be Create HR Policy. So you notice that uh, it's a big text, it's bold, it's different type of text than what it was before. Uh, the shading here is there for the labels. Everything that I've set up is there for status. It shows up as not started, which is red. If I change that to in progress, that's going to be yellow. Change that to completed, and that's green. And uh, description is a required column, so let me go ahead and fill this up. Needs to be created. And the last thing to check here is the due date. This should not be in the past. So I'll try to select something in the past. Here we go, it tells me that enter today's date or date in the future. All right, let me today, let me ch change that to um, something in the future. And now it's much better. Okay, so once I'm done putting all the data in, I'm going to click on Save. And here's my task. So this form behaves exactly like the other form. Well, in terms of actually executing the data, but the look and feel of the form, the validation, conditional formatting, even if I wanted to fetch some data to show in the form, I could have done that also because InfoPath supports it. Anything that InfoPath supports, you can do with customizing a SharePoint list form.